the 72 Pin Connector Podcast. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day edition. Why would anybody go out drinking when you can watch us and listen to us talk about Dark Souls? Yeah. While you wish we, you were drinking. Yes. You could play the 72 Pin you, Connector drinking game where every time we mention Dark Souls uh, 2 or Dark Souls 3 or even Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls Remastered, every time we say the phrase Dark Souls, you have to drink. Yes. You also it's then really, have permission to kick Tom in the ball. It's really the Dark Souls of drinking. <laughs> yes. You're you're actually going to need to be fairly intoxicated to uh, power through listening to this cast. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, everybody. But with us, we have Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi. And we have Eric. Hi, Eric. Sup. And we have I'm me, used to Adam. on this end of the thing. Yeah, isn't that weird? I'm not used to yeah, being on this end of really the thing. Weird. Yeah. We should Normally do this if I'm more not often. on your end of the thing, I'm just not here. Yeah, it's like that. What's that movie where the the like 30 something year old woman switched bodies with the teenager? Freaky Friday. Yeah. Oh, God. it's like that. Holy hell. Why did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> why did I know that? <laughs> OK, so uh, we're about 30 seconds into the cast and we've already we already hate Eric Freaky Friday. Yep. Freaky Fridays are right. brought up, and now we can get on to our WWF <laughs> debate because oh, Tom, no. for some reason, doesn't like Vader. No, oh my god, it's okay. Okay, I saw a meme, and it's entirely accurate. Wrestling is just redneck anime. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it really Dr. is. Yeah. Is That's British true. anime? Yeah. Just search Pretty on much. YouTube top ten WWE betrayals. <laughs> but the one thing is oh, you don't have you don't have a whole lot of yelling okay you have a lot of yelling but you don't have a lot of yelling into the mics normally when it's mic uh, talking yeah. it's just really stupid stupid i hate you i'm gonna kick your ass you stole my wife you killed my dog <laughs> whereas when you get anime you get goku yelling for three straight episodes because krillin did his only job which was to yeah. die okay yes, in, in defense in defense of anime you cannot take dragon ball z and compare it to anything else because that is what gave anime the trope of the charge episode yeah. where literally they were still writing the manga as the show was being made and they hadn't finished that part yet so they just had three episodes of people screaming <laughs> you you can't compare it it's it's like it's like comparing all socialist countries to vietnam you don't do it you just don't do it okay so i got i do got a question though yeah. um because that re raises a really good point um they got to the point in the show where the anime was about to surpass the manga so they stalled however when you <laughs> i i like the original full metal alchemist because it actually eventually deviated from the manga people got mm -hmm. outraged but i like it when the anime eventually says you know what we are feeling our own stride here we're gonna go the way we feel the show should go and not the way the manga was written so they Game of Thrones the whole thing. Yeah. 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 There's nothing I, wrong with I that. I like that. I like that. It's, it's all right if it works, you know? It's totally fine if it works. And, you know, that way you can get the diverging paths and you've got people who, you know, have read the Game of Thrones book and then like, holy shit, such and such got murdered by this guy in the Rage in the Cage match. And I totally wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. Um Hell in yep. a cell, man. Hell in a cell. Oh, I'm sorry. Rage I thought it was cage. Rage in the Cage with Nick, with Nick Cage. Um, <laughs> if you get Nicolas Cage in a cage match, who would you want to see him fight? An, a clone of Nicolas Cage. Yeah, basically. So you just want to see two Nicolas Cages yeah. in a cage. The Nicolas Cage, Cage, Cage the match. The winner gets the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> so this should have been the end of national security. Or yes. security. National, national security. Treasure. National, national treasure. Treasure. No, no, national security. It's the <laughs> very end of all national security. That would be great. Actually, that would be fucking terrible. I, I be typically... Hilarious. He's weird. He feels like such an overactor. You kind of laugh at his serious roles. Yeah. Because it feels like he's just trying so he's fucking just, hard to play it straight. Like, he's like, fine, what, what but is it? it's just funny it's, at this point because there's so many memes. So no matter what he does now... It's funny. You know yes. it's a Nicolas Cage movie if every line of dialogue is either screamed or whispered and nothing in between. <laughs> hey, guys, I think I know where the Declaration of Independence is. It's over here! <laughs> a bit like that? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Actually, exactly. That was spot on. Yeah, it was pretty good. I couldn't actually tell the difference. I mean, give me a couple million dollars. I'll, I'll do a few of those movies, no problem. <laughs> All right. 
I'll dust off some stuff, say some bullshit, and hold up the picture of a Mona Lisa, call it a blockbuster. So, guys, hmm? I got I got some some difficult topics to bring up. Uh oh. I went to a Thai place. I got jungle curry, and Mistake. it was supposed to be. It it was. It really was. <laughs> it it just wasn't good. It wasn't curry like at all. Uh, it wasn't a thick broth. It was a very thin, soupy, almost Campbell's soup can kind of thin broth. Like, it wasn't even that flavorful. Um, and I ordered it like I went to like a legit Thai place. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Let's give me the two out of five. It's like, I'm not going to totally pansy out. I'm not I'm not going to go the one. But, you know, I don't want it, you to blast my face off. Um, As Adam so always the, says, is you don't know if it's going to be white guy hot or actually exactly. Hot. Yeah. So that's so racist. Apparently the I would never to, say that the one to the one to five scale was white guy hot. Uh, so I got something that resembled maybe a little bit of fresh pepper on like scrambled eggs or something. So there was no spice whatsoever, <laughs> no flavor, thin broth. And it just wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Mm. Uh, so I think next time, just doing straight up red curry. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cool question. Why are you going to a Thai place and not getting pad Thai? Pad Thai is I don't fucking like, amazing. I don't like uh, pad Thai. It's their if national dish, but it's not their only Thai food dish. I mean, no, it's not. But if I want curry, I'm going to more of an Indian restaurant to get me some good curry. It's a different I style like of curry. curry. I, yeah, I like the they're, they're different. Curry. Speaking I, of which, I, I really, I've, actually, I've been really craving Indian food lately. So oh there's like a place damn. that we had for our team meeting mm -hmm. that they had Indian curried chicken on a pizza. With peppers and oh, oh my god, god oh, I it bet was that was so good. good. Oh I made an Indian style pizza one time. I used really? uh, like a uh, some sort of I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was tandoori paste or some sort of curry paste thing, and I used that as a sauce, and then had some yeah, peppers nice. and stuff on the top. And I didn't know about paneer, but I would have used that as a cheese if I had known about that oh. at the time. But it was still good, dude. That time when I got that paneer, oh, that was so fucking good. Yeah. I'm hungry. Fried I'm not paneer. even hungry, but now I'm hungry. Yeah. That's all it takes is, hey, you want the fried paneer? Um, actually, this morning, um, I went to a place that had some amazing fucking um, Eggs Benedict. Nice. Um, it's that place we went, Adam, when you was in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Egg and Us? Yeah. Was it Egg and Us? No. No, no. It's a what place called oh, Mary's okay. Fine Foods. It was like, okay. um, it is, you walk in and you're just like, oh, it's a shitty diner. And I bet their food is amazing. Nice. And it was their their service. The people who work there are some of the nicest people I've dealt with in a restaurant. The food is amazing. It took a while to get the food, but that was awesome because it sounds like there was only one person cooking and there was like 20 orders ahead of us. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. But man, it was good. Their hollandaise sauce is so fucking good. And then you put a little bit of um, chihuahua or I can't remember that. That um, Kalula hot sauce. Kaloa, yeah. Shall I at your boy? <laughs> that that <laughs> shit on top. Oh, just, <laughs> that's a pretty good hot sauce. Really good flavor. I'm really good flavor. As far as Mexican hot sauces, though, Valentina, excellent. I don't think I've ever I don't had. Know it. If I know that one, it's in like the big brown bottle. Like it's the size of like a beverage bottle, not like a little thin regular hot so sauce. Comes in oh, like a Frank right. size bottle. Yeah, kind of. I've I've seen it. I have never tried it. There's a black labeled one, and I think the other one is like an orange color. Hmm. One of them's extra hot, but oh man, it's so good. It's got kind of a smoky flavor need, to it. I need to start buying some hot sauces for the house. Just keep some like in the drawer. I, I mean, I know I can't cook really spicy food anymore, but I'll still put some on the side. Yeah. Mm, love me some spice. You make you some wings. Toss it in some sauce. Mm, I tell you what, I've been... I've been looking at the uh, lemon pepper wet video that Babish did, and every time I watch, oh, I'm yeah. like, "That seems really easy. I could do this." Yeah, but I never, I never go forward and uh, you know buy a bunch of wing stuff. Oh, have you? You never made your own wings before? No, no, I have, I have. But before, when I made my own wings, I had my own deep fryer before it like fried itself to death. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I would always fry the wings. But what I want to do is I want to try Babish's method of uh, putting, was it monosodium glutamate? I think MSG maybe? on the wings. Yeah. Um, or no, it's Tom, not. Tom it's not would a, say the. <laughs> it's not. 
Uh, he puts something. I forget what it is. He puts something on the on the wings. It might be as simple as like baking soda or whatever. Um, but he throws them in the oven or in the fridge, and that dries out the skin. Then after you put them in the oven, it gets that fried, crispy texture to it without actually being fried. You see, I was able to pull that off, but what you do is you sauce them before you bake them. You take them out halfway through the baking and you re-sauce, and the hmm. sauce will actually caramelize on them. And then you Ooh. have a side of sauce while you're eating them. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. It is amazing. I approve. It, yes. We need to do a cooking stream. I'm really hungry, and I'm not hungry, but I'm now I'm hungry. I, I want some rings. <laughs> we do need to do a cooking hey. stream. That we do. We should have done it for this one because it's episode 72. Damn right. But we're awesome at planning. Anyway, we're we're so awesome. So awesome at planning. Speaking of awesome, did anybody play anything uh, awesome lately? um, I've played something a little new. Something a little new Um, here. Yeah. Uh, Kirby. Kirby. Uh, Kirby Star Allies. So um, it's the new Kirby game. Just came out on Friday. Um, it's it's really fucking awesome. Also, sorry guys, uh, we're taking care of the issue right now. Don't worry about it. But um, yeah, it just came out on Friday. Finally started playing some today. Um, it's a Kirby game. It's fun. I, I like Kirby games. Um, have you guys played much Kirby? No, actually, I think I played one on. Yes. I played one on like the Game Boy something. Maybe Game Boy Advance. I can't remember. Long time ago, but I haven't played one I have even played remotely it. recently. I have played a shit ton of Kirby. Um, started out way, way back in the day playing Kirby's Advent or uh, Kirby's Dreamland on the original Game Boy uh, because that game was just fucking rad. And did you know Kirby in his first absorbed the powers of his enemies? It wasn't a thing. Um, mm. Also, the box art for Kirby. Uh, he was white. They hadn't picked a color scheme, so they made him white. Uh, eventually, uh, for the NES uh, release of Kirby's Adventure, they gave him his uh, you know, copy powers, and they made him pink. Um, and by the way, Kirby's Adventure is probably one of the greatest NES games of all time. It was lengthy, but not long, like super drawn out. It mm-hmm. didn't overstay its welcome or anything. Mm-hmm. The soundtrack is glorious. The difficulty ramps up just perfectly and smoothly. It honestly feels like an adventure. It was one of my favorite 2D platformers of the era and a game I can go back to anytime today. So my first experience, exposure to actually playing a proper Kirby game was Kirby's Adventure and it probably would have been about 2003. So wow. I, mean, I, I went back through emulation to play it. Um, and that's when I'm like, man, this this is a really good platformer. It takes the generic platforming and puts a really good twist. Like Mario tried to do it with, you know, the suits and stuff. But I feel mm-hmm. Kirby is really where that really hit its stride is I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to take that guy. I'm going to take this dude. Um, yeah, and this just simply one, inhale your opponents. Yeah. And then press down to absorb or just spit them out because they taste like crap. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so on this new one, you actually can make a party, um, for the special ability people, you can throw a heart at them and they'll join your party and they'll fight with you. And, um, you can get up to four of them and that's Ooh. how this is co-op. So I could throw a star or heart at someone and bring in a flamethrower dude. And Tom can play as a flamethrower dude as I play as Kirby. Nice. Um, and then all of a sudden I absorb in the power of the sword guy. And here's where it gets really cool. The sword can take different elements so I can hold up and then Tom can ca- or blow fire on me and my sword will become a flame sword and become stronger now Hmm. so with the different elements and people you put together you actually get different attacks like i had the rock power and there's this ice dino and if i hold up the ice dino will throw ice down in front of me i'll turn into a curling hammer and i'll just get thrown into the enemies huh so they curling curling stone yeah, curling stone. I guess curling hammer isn't really a thing, is it? No, because there there are brooms and there are stones. I believe I don't see, curl. You see, I see curling as you get a big ass hammer at one side and you just throw it and you try to get it to impale the ice right in the bullseye. It's kind of like lawn lawn darts, but with ice and hammers. But then, what does I, the broom guy do? Yes, he uh, cleans he up runs after. for his life because you play it on a pond and you don't <laughs> want to be around when it breaks. <laughs> Yeah, that the loser sounds- goes down with the ice. <laughs> very, very accurate. That's exactly what they had at the Olympics. 
Nice. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like high adventure, but yeah, um, I'm to the first, uh, the first final boss. It's um, haven't gotten to the boss part yet. Um, so far, the only thing I will say is it is super easy so far. Yeah. Granted, Kirby's never known for being highly difficult, but from what I've understood, you get lives. If you run out of lives, it's game over. Now, I mm. it's Nintendo, so I don't think it's going to be brutal, brutal. Mm -hmm. But it says it's going to be game over. But I think it's going to be like uh, Super Mario 64, run out of lives. It restarts you with the same stars you had with three lives. Yeah, I, I never honestly got why they even had lives or one-ups in Mario 64. Because the only thing it made me do, uh, the, the only, you know, fail state was that I had to go back to the title screen. And I would reload the file and jump back into the world. Like it, the only thing that cost me was time. So it was yeah. a, a little frustrating. Uh, and that's, that's it. So I think if I'm a guy who I like punishing games. Yeah. But would that have been good as a mega or a permadeath? Like you run out of lives, your save gets wiped. Would you really want it? No, no, no. I'm, I'm advocating for, you know, what modern platformers have done, which is to do away with the concept of lives entirely. We don't mm -hmm. need them. Uh, and unless you're making, you know, the dark souls of platforming, drink um okay, then sorry, you don't need a life a system thing. just because uh, you have a life I, system and you die and you go back doesn't make it the dark souls it makes it if anything the fucking mario because yeah. mario did it i i think that really revolves more around total game length because to sit through and play a modern platformer the, your play time is going to be a lot higher than it would be to run through sonic 2 or whatever indeed but True, i would but like sonic to see still like a I would like to see more modern games still employ that life system with the permadeath. I think that's, it adds a yes. lot of tension when you've got that one life left and you've gotten further in the game you've ever gotten before and you're trying to get, make your way to the end. I have been a huge advocate of modern games are made simple and that includes mm -hmm. Dark Souls. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there's not difficult sequences. What I'm saying is the fact that your death has no true punishment because you don't lose where you're at. Yeah. If Dark Souls was to say, you know what? You have lives. If you lose all your lives, we delete your save. That would make it legitimate. Like, it would rev up the difficulty. It would make it to me. Well, like, you okay, wouldn't have enough lives difficulty. to ever beat the game in Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> See, they do something like, similar oh in two. So the more you die, if you die while hollowed, they take a chunk of your life bar. Uh, and they take it all the way down to 50%. But... That, that's actually not great design. So on one hand, while it feels like, oh, I can't die because then I'll have less less health, mm -hmm. uh, what it actually results in is the the you know person who's doing bad just does worse because now you have less health going into the game. Snowball oh, and, and the people who are doing really well keep doing really well. It's, yeah. it's the worst form I, of capitalism. I, I don't <laughs> like the handicapping. Handicapping is the wrong idea. Just hardcore, like, okay, you have 10 lives. You run out of them, you restart. Mm -hmm. Not handicapping, because yes, handicapping, that's that slippery slope of like playing drinking games. Once you lose, you get a little more drunk, you lose more, you get more drunk. And it's that slippery slope that, oh, fuck, there's no getting out of this. Right. Until you die. And yeah, until you die of <laughs> alcohol poisoning, or you run out of it. One, one of the so, two, one of the two. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's uh, Difficulty in games is, is interesting. I do like that it's a... Uh, topic of design now mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty popular talk around game design forums uh, around panels and such uh, because there are ways to um you know make a game difficult but not frustrating um and a great example of that is celeste it's the platform i'm going through on the switch right now because it is fucking difficult i they actually count your deaths so you can go back and look oh look i died 400 times in this world, which, by the way, is not an inaccurate number. It's not an exaggeration. That mm -hmm. was one of the death counters for one of these worlds. Um, Damn. And, yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> so, Good. But uh, it does the cool Super Meat Boy thing where you die and you pop back up at the beginning and you go from there. Uh, it's a really quick feedback loop. It's, okay, fuck, I died. All right, I'm back in. Mm -hmm. It's not a you died and a life tick uh, or a life counter ticks down and then you load into the level and there's a loading screen and then you get in and then you have to go through a, a cutscene and now you're actually playing. It's a really quick, you fucked up, try it again. Mm -hmm. You fucked up again, keep trying it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, you fucked up again. Congratulations, try it again. 
Um, yeah. It makes for a, a really quick retry loop, which is great. Uh, so if I say to most modern gamers, start down X, right? Retry your run in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Uh, <laughs> the, the quick iterative feedback loops are fantastic and yeah. alleviate frustration. You can make a fucking difficult game, but as long as you've got these quick iterative cycles, uh, the player doesn't feel it as much. That's true. Absolutely. And that's where, to me, there's it's two different levels of difficulty. It is the, I'm going to learn run after run after run after run after run after run. I got it. I go to the next run after run after run versus, okay, I've got to play through this. I died. I have to play through it all again. Eventually, you become a god on the first two stages. Yeah. That's like true. Mario 1-1, Mario we were doing speed runs to see how quick we can go. And it's amazing how bad you suck at it if you haven't played it for so long. True. I mean, and there's... that's something when we were all playing Mario one one. I mean, you just you can do it blind. I mean, you don't look and you beat it. And now yeah. if you go back, it's not that simple. That's the whole sprint versus marathon thing. There's the immediate yes. dif difficulty of the situation you're in in the game right now. And then there's the long term difficulty of having to perform all of these less difficult tasks, but uh, with a, a bigger consequence at the end, if you if you don't do all of those tasks. That, okay, I think that's so more more you. in the line of I hate bringing this game up, but Dark Souls is definitely more let, long term because you have to backtrack a lot I, when you die, depending on where you died. Within the reason, just, right? It doesn't throw yeah. you all the way back to no, the no, 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 game, no. but there are lengthy spurts where you know to, in Blight Town to make your run to the boss. That section of Blight Town, I'm a fucking god at because I had to do it so goddamn <laughs> much. I know the ins and outs of that area pretty well. Mm -hmm. But that's been a mechanic in a game for a long time. I mean, like Ninja Gaiden was the same way, where you have these little totems right. where you save, and you have to run through the same sequence of fucking enemies because that boss keeps murdering you. Mm -hmm. But, okay, Adam, you've actually played a game recently that is permadeath. Uh, we're not going to elaborate much outside of that, but how do you feel that the idea that Hellblade was permadeath, did, did it affect the way that you viewed your playing? Like, were you more cautious? Did it adjust the way you actually approach situations? Yes, it did. Um, but was it negative in that positive? specific in that specific game, though, it wasn't hard enough that I was ever really that worried about it. I mean, it made me play more careful, but I never died enough times where I was even worried about, oh no, what if I'm getting close to that threshold or whatever. So I I like the idea. It's a ballsy move to throw permadeath in a game, um, depending on the length of the game, obviously. Uh, but I do yeah. like that aspect. That's why I, I kind of gravitate towards roguelikes a lot, is because I like that uh, that run-based system that, you know, oh crap, I got to start all over because I died. Maybe I'll do better this time. Yes. And I like that you call that out because I think that's really the only place in modern games you see this is your roguelikes where it's all run based. It's just mm -hmm. go. And even it's then, almost, oh. even then, uh, it's because there's the whole the meta game too. It's not just permadeath back to square one. You know, you're still making unlocks within the the larger game world or the item unlocks things like that. Even if you don't make it all the way through a run you're still making progress in the game overall. Right, right, which I think is a really nice gameplay concession because in Enter the Gungeon, you know, I haven't gotten any further than the third world. Mm -hmm. uh, but That in, game's just fucking brutal. Yes, it, it is fucking good, brutal, though. but every time I play it, I make a little bit of progress. I get a, a little bit more, you know, currency. I, I get to unlock a couple more guns. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I never feel like my time is wasted. Where going black to play, you know, the old ASCII roguelikes, when I die, there's no meta game to it. You're yeah. just fucking dead. Like, yeah. that's it. I lost all of that progress, which, okay, it, it's it's all right. I don't hate the games because of it, but mm -hmm. it's definitely a different feeling. I don't feel accomplished at all. Yeah. Um, I, I would argue that, uh, you know, the back to square one 
progress isn't just seen in roguelikes. It's actually seen in a lot of, uh, of multiplayer games today. I'm referring to uh, all of the Battle Royale games, right? Because those are very, very run-based, right? Mm-hmm. You have a run, you do decently well, you die, you go back to square one, right? You have no loot, you start all over again. So kind you're of. technically right. Yeah. You're technically right. I don't think it feels the same. That's like saying that Call of Duty every time, or Halo, let's go Halo, before there was leveling systems. Every match, you start the same. And yes, you're right. But there is... Yes, win or lose at like against an opponent, but like story progression wise is yeah. really what I'm getting at. That's where I think it makes it feel a little different. Yeah, in a game like Hellblade, which I can't remember how long it took me. I want to think it was about a ten hour playthrough, something like that. If I would have gotten towards the end and died permadeath, I don't know that I would have ever finished the game. You know what I mean? Like that there is, gets to a point where yeah, the game is so true. long that it's almost stupid to include permadeath because you're going to alienate people who would have maybe loved the game but couldn't get far enough you know what i mean that's true i have actually completely ditched games Mm -hmm. because like i would do multi-save states yeah and one of my save states got lost and i would have had to revert back five hours and i'm like fuck it and i didn't touch the game for another month yeah i've done that I've, i've done that and never picked up the game again ever but to me, the difference like, there, I feel like I got cheated there. It's not that I fucked up. It's a some like my save got corrupted. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if if I, you know, had a permadeath at the very last boss in, you know, uh, in, in Dark Souls, I probably wouldn't have gone back to the game. Yeah, not, not yeah, a game like I, that. I mean, you guys are right. It definitely the game length has a lot to do with that. And I, what I'm glamoring for is back in the early 90s, and a lot of times the games were short back then is because of technical diff, or technical restrictions. Mm-hmm. So permadeath made sense because if you only have a game that's three hours, if it's not permadeath, your guy, this kid's going to be done in your game in like four hours, and then yeah. what the fuck? Right. I mean, it's the whole arcade quarter, uh, quarter eating machine kind of stuff. I mean, you got to have something that keeps them coming back, and that was the permadeath. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and actually, um, I do want to ask something real quick. Sure. Um, I know this is really out of the blue. Uh, Bivens pulls this up, and I did see this. Do you guys see that they're remastering Modern Warfare 2? I uh, saw a headline. I didn't look into it, but that's interesting. Yeah, so it's it's not confirmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is still a rumor. There was a uh, a listing spotted on an online retailer, and... More times than not, though, that that tends to pan out, especially <laughs> mm-hmm. when it's tends to. Just, it's their second best title ever. And Call yeah. of Duty's realizing that, you know, we're still getting sales numbers, but we're not hitting the hearts like we used to. And Modern Warfare 2 was the last big hurrah for me. That or Black so, Ops 2. I, I loved Modern Warfare. I, I liked Modern Warfare 2. I, the uh, remaster isn't enough to make me go back to the game. I, yeah. I got my fill in the multiplayer. The single player, I have no interest in going back to. It was impactful because it was surprising. The no Russian mission in particular, you know, turned a lot of heads and caused a lot of chatter about, you know, what can we do in a video game? Like, what morally can we make a player do in a video game? And yeah. and B, if if we do have somebody commit a heinous act in a campaign mission that we force them to go through... Um, unless they opt out the, at the beginning of the game without knowing what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if if we force them to go through this, what kind of message can we send the player, right? And I, I remember it was one of the only video games to actually make me feel uh, like physically ill. Dirty. I, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was literally nauseous after playing No Russian um, because it's, it's totally different, right? We kill tons of people in video games. In Grand Theft Auto, I run around and I murder people. <laughs> it's hilarious. So much fun. But yeah. these people in, in in the no Russian mission, they were defenseless. They were running. They were screaming. They were begging for their lives. And it just didn't feel good mm-hmm. at all. It didn't have the same satisfaction. It, it You're exactly right, Eric. It felt dirty. It just felt fucking nauseating at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know what? Their message 
was so fucking effective, right? Yeah. I will never forget that mission in my entire life because of the profound effect it had on me. I was uh, actually going to say it made you feel dirty. Yeah. But it's one of the weird situations where I felt so bad, so dirty, yet it was such a good design decision. Mm -hmm. Oh, have it was you, have either of you guys played uh, was amazing. Have you guys played Spec Ops the line? Yes. I, I haven't. Yes. No, I haven't, yes. but I'm asking because it's really relevant to this. Yes. So a big a big Various. theme in that game is similar to that mission it, to make you feel as a player or as the person in that game like are you really doing what you should be doing? <laughs> I or I will is... I will say it I will say it again I'm not going to spoil Spec Ops line if you haven't played it don't watch anything about it don't read anything about it I know it's pretty spoilerized already out on the internet mm -hmm. uh, go pick it up it's probably like two dollars now um, you are not going to have fun. It is not a fun game. Uh, it is, you know, at first glance, it is a <laughs> very mediocre, copy-paste, derivative third-person action game where the controls aren't really that great. The action is pretty dull and boring. But when you, you know, push through and make it to the end of the game, it is the biggest fucking payoff I think I have ever seen in a shooter. Um, I thought you were talking Call of Duty for a second. I was about to smack you. I'm like, Modern Warfare <laughs> 2 was really fucking good, no, man. No, no, Call of Duty had excellent <clears throat> mechanics. So Spec Ops Online, <laughs> it's not a fun game. I, I would actually put it, um, I would give it the title of the first video game drama, right? It's not fun. It won't make you laugh. It isn't a good time. It just isn't. It's not a good made, it's not a well-made game. Um, but the what it tells you at the end and what it puts you through at the end is so goddamn great and so perfectly introspective of not only the player but at, uh, of the genre itself um just excellent absolutely excellent game go pick it up go play through it don't have a good time but push through to the end um question on those i haven't played one since ps1 are they still super tactical like this, no shots? no this no. is uh this is totally different you could basically just not even think of it as a spec ops game it's just oh, got okay. the spec ops yeah. name it's probably okay. more different than rainbow six sieges to the other rainbow six titles yeah it's completely different but um yeah but back to modern warfare 2 remastered uh how well i mean didn't the Call of Duty 4 remaster not do that well? Um, it did okay, but they did stuff to modernize it, and um, being Activision slash Blizzard, they found a way to insert loot box kind of stuff to it. Oh, they they added they some that. effects of the modern Call of Duties into it. Mm -hmm. But I, I really enjoyed that system. It was the first you still had your level systems in it and you had the ability to choose, you know what? I want this kill streak. I want that kill streak and different things. Mm -hmm. It's just, I like the way that you can customize your character while it didn't feel overpowered. Yeah. So if I, a modern warfare two remaster really came well. out, would you guys consider buying it? No, it would be price point specific. I wouldn't pay $60 for it. 30 bucks right now. I would consider it. If I had friends picking it up at that price, I might. Okay, fair enough. Um, I but there's one thing. Fail. There's one thing about that game. I have to tell you a story. I was a douche during that game. During that era, we know there <laughs> we was know. a. Well, I'm, I'm still a douche, but um, there was a glitch for care packages and for emergency drops. So what those were? A care package is you get a smoke grenade, you throw it, and a random crate drops with a random item. Mm -hmm. An emergency drop, you throw a smoke grenade and three random packages drop. It could be sentries, it could be chopper gunners, it could be anything but a nuke. So there was a glitch where you went to pull out that grenade to throw it while you were climbing on something. You would throw it, get the item, and still have the smoke grenade. <laughs> oh, so my. I would get the emergency drop to get three of those. I would throw it, get three, throw it again, get three. I would have sentries guarding where I was doing this. While I was getting all these like a ten or um like all the airplane drops, all the chopper gunners and oh everything, my God. Constant. I would end matches just like twenty five and zero, thirty and two. Jesus, yeah, I was. You are, you are what's wrong with multiplayer gaming? 
Hey, hey, I fix your damn I'm game. Sorry. This won't happen. Yeah, I'm sorry. I found out how the game actually worked. No, um, it, it was it was really bad. And I, in hindsight, I was a complete jerk. But God, that was fun. Yeah, I Have don't know that I wouldn't have done that. Destroyed people in a shooter. It is fun. As someone who is bad at online shooters, I would have taken anything I could get to play, have numbers that good at the end of a round. <laughs> <laughs> and it helped that I actually wasn't terrible at that, so I could actually work my way up to those rewards naturally and then mm -hmm. spam them. Yeah. But, yeah. That's funny. Um, Call of Duty. When's the, well, okay, here, let's go around real quick. Yeah. Adam, what was the last Call of Duty you played? Uh, the newest one during the free weekend. That doesn't count, does it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, on, on a regular basis, not just all I played oh, for five minutes. Uh, Modern Warfare 2. Okay. I kind of um, ditched out right around Black Ops. Uh, Black Ops for me. Although, I like, even even with Black Ops, I, like, I played through the campaign, but I, I fired up the multiplayer and played a couple hours of that. Mm -hmm. The last multiplayer Call of Duty I got really into, so I, it just got tiring really quickly, was Modern Warfare 2. I, I, know, I know people buy Call of Duty games just for the multiplayer, and they're like, oh, wait... There is a single player mode. That's news to me. Um, but I never got into it. Anytime I wanted to play a really fast paced, you know, twitchy shooter, I fired up Unreal. Ah, uh, I've, I've never, sucks. I've never played an Unreal game. I, I've game? played like um, Unreal 2001, I think it was. Mm. 2004. Uh, what would have been out? What would have been out in 01? 99. ET 99. Okay, that's what because what we did, uh, we just got to a new school and we booted this up on all of the PCs in the computer lab. And the last day of school, we all went to the computer lab because no one gave a shit and was playing this. And teachers were putting it on their computers and playing with us. Nice. It was awesome. Like, Dude, you would ninety nine is so good. And it it's one of the last experiences I had with a big land. Big lands on shooters are great. When you have everyone that's in the match within yelling distance of each other, and it's great if it has to be yelling, because all of a sudden down the hallway you hear, God damn it, Cody! And you just hear that kind of stuff. Yep. It's like, yes! No no Discord, no headphones, just screaming at each other. Oh, yes. Fucking great. I fucking miss those days. Tom, world. Yeah, we are. So, uh, actually, UT99, because I just played it a couple months ago, has still got a pretty active online community. And they also have a bot limit that I think Dila has maxed out. It was a couple hundred bots he put on the game, and it just crashed. <laughs> I saw that. It was awesome. After he had a rocket that killed, like, 70 people. Well, it was a really, really 70. good shot. Yeah, that's what happens when the entire map's nothing but bots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll do it. But yeah, um, also, uh, speaking of DLS and them, I've been playing some PUBG recently. I've been jumping back in. Oh, nice. Dude, playing that game with people that are actually good, the game feels different. Yeah. It, it is super chill most of the time. They know what they're doing. They'll tell you where to go. They know where they're going, and they're just assholes, so they'll fuck around with you. But when it gets into the shit, they can say, like, okay, I heard that shot. He's probably here doing this. And it's just amazing. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> I've never, like, I'm used to having that kind of skill in a regular shooter, not something this big, this massive, where it's so random the amount of people you're playing with. So it's just felt so much different. Man, it was fun. I still think I prefer Battlegrounds over Fortnite. Yeah, I do. They're, Definitely. They're totally different they're games. Different. When I want to chill and play a you know a 100 man battlefield game uh like i randomly jumped in with josh and w josh carried me to a chicken dinner and it was just chill and cool but like PUBG, it's so fucking tense it's <laughs> always so fucking tense yeah. it's it's great it's a great feeling when that's what you want uh yes. but you know when i play fortnite i'm not really looking for that i'm looking for a chill multiplayer game that's just kind of goofy um and PUBG is not kind of goofy i was sneaking through some tunnels last night <laughs> you, you can you can but it's definitely the the gameplay leads you down a totally different path but like this guy snuck up on me i didn't see anyone for the entire match i was like top 10 and a guy walked into a room and shot me 
And that was my game. Wow. Just Indeed. super intense for 90 <laughs> people. And then I died out of nowhere. And that's where I feel it's different with the high end people because they understand where the circles are, where the flight path was, where the most of the people are probably coming from. And while, yeah, okay, you still have that calm. Whenever you see someone and you're with good people, it's no longer a, a let's avoid them. It's okay, let's do what we're doing and then keep an eye on these guys because if they come around, we're going to kill them. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different. Because I remember playing initially, it was always, dude, let's not get in the shit. Let's just stay alive. We're going to place high. That's fine. And it's a whole different feel now. Yeah. Speaking of while we're on the That's subject good. of Battle Royale games, did you guys see anything on Mavericks? No. Um, I don't know if it's... I need to look this up more. I'm, I'm just bringing it up because I, I heard a brief thing about it, but I haven't looked into it yet. It's not out or anything, and I don't think it's early access either, but it's going to be a Battle Royale game with a 400-person player count and a destructible Ooh. environment. Oh, Rest in a, in in a realistic setting, which Rest sounds servers. ridiculously ambitious. So I, oh. I mostly even doubt that it's going to come out. But I just wanted to the bring last, it up. It just the last something game to look I into with destructible scenery, Battlefield Three, and they had to reverse that because how glitchy that shit got when everything can get destroyed. Well, the ground, yeah, They're, but. But by the time they there, time were, they there fixed... were people that would literally just grab grenades and and grenade themselves into yeah. pits in the ground, and you yeah. couldn't kill them because they were just stuck in the ground. But when they got Shooting rid of the through the ground, yeah, when they got rid of the ground destruction though, and they left the walls and stuff, it worked pretty well. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. But that's not everything though. When yeah. I hear everything, I'm thinking if you throw a grenade, you just made a divot. Yeah, yeah. When well, when I hear everything, I I think of. Uh, Red faction on the PS2. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, that building tunnels in the wall with the red rocket underwater. launcher. Yep. Um, it's it doesn't it's it didn't things, say right? explicitly everything is destructible. It just said with destructible ah. environments. So okay, I would assume maybe just structures or certain walls or something. I don't know, but I just That's wanted to bring sick. it up. Something to look into. I will definitely look into it more. I don't want to talk too much about it. I don't know if I would like a battle royale style game with that many people, but I love, I love high body count shooters. Mag was one of my favorite <laughs> shooters I've played. Yeah, I miss Mag. Did you two fifty six on two fifty six? Oh God, that was so good. Did you ever, did you see those pictures of like WalMarts that still carried copies of Mag long after all the servers were taken down? <laughs> Company nice. people need to get in trouble for that man. That is. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> that would I would be so mad. You, you know That's... what I miss? I miss Planet Side. So I I got into oh, Planet yeah. Side too a little bit. Um, and that that was just I wanted to fun. like that, and I downloaded it and played it because that was after the whole mag thing, and I wanted yeah I wanted so badly to like that, and I just it just seemed pointless. Like everything I did didn't seem to matter. Yeah, it. I don't know. And at the time, it, uh, my computer didn't run it very well either, so that wasn't exactly encouraging. Uh, it, it was. It was interesting because it was, you know, an, an MMO first-person shooter. Um, but you ran into issues because it was all PvP between different factions. That mm -hmm. you'd have guys that had been playing the game forever, um, you know. And I would go to try to defend this base, and like all of the basically like level eighty characters would just mm -hmm. annihilate me and one-shot me with sniper rifles from halfway across the universe because they could. Um, there wasn't any of this uh, level gating that you see in other MMOs, and I think that was kind of the downfall And when I quit playing, when I realized that, hey, I'm going to have to grind forever to even have a chance at playing this game effectively. And that, that's a downside whenever people come in late, but if you're one of the first players to have a game where the entire game is open, mm -hmm. it feels really good. But the problem yeah. is you can't get that feeling to anyone else later. It's only yeah, yeah. the first people that come in that get that feeling. Yeah. So I I don't like shooters that are level based. I'll say it that way. Where the levels matter. Like COD's level based, but for the most part it doesn't really matter. That's when true. you get substantially better shit, like yep. I mean we're talking hand fist better. Mm -mm. I think that's a really I I 
don't like that for competitiveness. It's fine for games like Borderlands, but yeah. I don't like that in like a mono e mono kind of game. Absolutely. So, did anybody else yeah. play play anything else this week that we we should talk about? I mean, Rocket League, but no. Yeah, I played some Rocket League. I played some Dark Souls Three. I got a little further. I beat uh, the first boss, the first like boss boss after the tutorial boss. Uh, nice. Vort, the, Vort. the puppy. He was not a puppy. He was he was kind of a puppy. No, it's like a he was a, he was a nice puppy. No, it was like a man. Tom, that he that he, he was, didn't fight that. It was a man was that crawling. had the posture of a puppy wearing a suit of yeah, armor. Yeah, that guy, the puppy. It was not a puppy. He was There's actually a he dog, was he was there? carrying a mace. Puppies don't have yeah. thumbs to carry maces. <laughs> he's uh, he's a really <laughs> special pupper. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, but I mean, my way an actual to... dog with a sword. Yeah, something like that. Yes, that's that's Sif. He's in Dark Souls One. Oh, one. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I got to the undead that's... settlement, and now I'm getting my ass handed to me. So, such as Dark Souls. Nice. Um, yeah, I didn't really play anything else. Just just Celeste and uh, in Fortnite a little bit, and that's that's it. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, speaking of shooters, leveling, and progression systems, did you guys see that Star Wars Battlefront 2 just announced their giant progression system overhaul? And I gotta say, it looks pretty nice. It's the way it should have been. Yep, exactly. So it's not gonna not gonna help them. I mean, it's a little late. Yeah, too the hype's already died down. I refuse yeah. to ever say it's too little, too late. I, re I refuse to say that because I've seen too many games correct the ship and get yeah. it right. Ubisoft. Rainbow we've Six. talked about yeah. this. We've talked about that with Ubisoft. We, I think but, we talked about that yeah. the last cast. Definitely true. Ba Battlegrounds 2 felt good. It was a fun uh, battle, game. Uh, Battlefront. Front. There's too oh, many battle... Yes. Battle it's mentions. Negative, er, Fuck battle yeah, man. Prefixes. <laughs> but no, uh, Battlefront 2 felt great when we played that. When we did that for that post gas game, that it felt great. The space combat was some of the that was best great. space was, combat I, ever done. I hate, so good. I hate vehicle levels in games and like vehicle missions and stuff. Uh, any Battlefield game I've played, I don't really care about the vehicles that much. But for some reason, that was a lot of fun when we did those. What, what were they called? Galactic something? Galactic. I can't remember yeah. what they were called. We'll, we'll just call it. That. It was fun. I was so surprised because I hate vehicles and games like that. But I loved it. Listen, people don't like EA. People always hate on EA. Yes. But I will say this about this. If they actually make a game and they actually put the effort into it, they are good at the shit. They just like to make a lot of fucking money too, but yeah. they are good at the craft. They're shitty, they, but they're good. They dice. I mean, yeah. dice knows what they're doing when it comes to these games, right? That's why they're, yeah, the the biggest developer around of games like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Battlefield 1942 was the game on PC back in the day, right? That yeah. that was the shit, and everyone bad played company it. It too was so good. God, that multiplayer was awesome. I loved bad um, company too. So, so to jump into some details, um, uh, classes, heroes, ships, uh, the things you use in multiplayer will now individually earn experience points. Uh, experience points help you level up, and each level awards a skill point, which can be spent on star cards. Uh, star cards and other gameplay changing unlocks will not be purchasable through credits uh, or the paid currency crystals. Um, and star cards are no longer found in crates. I'm basically reading directly from the IGN article. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, crates now only contain credits, uh, which is a in-game currency, or cosmetic items like emotes or victory poses. Um, crates cannot be purchased with any currency and will only be awarded as a daily login bonus for completing time challenges or completing milestones. Um, the only downside, and, and I understand why they had to make this decision, um, but it, it is going to lend itself to the too little, too late feeling, is that everything players have earned before or purchased before uh, will remain theirs and will be completely unchanged. So if yeah. you went full pay to win and you bought all the shit before this change, you get to keep all of your pay to win items. That sucks, but... You can't just would take really... a bunch of stuff away from players exactly. that they already have. It's that. Exactly. 
It's that, or they have to refund it and still lose a quarter of those people. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Yeah, but it's it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. And and frankly, frankly, um, you know, if they tried to get the people to refund it, it, it they dug their own grave here right they mm-hmm. couldn't yes. make a, a good decision or they, they couldn't make a good choice here because they already made a super shitty choice before so i don't really feel bad for them being in this damned if you do damned if you don't situation. Right. yeah they, no, they made how, their bed they're gonna lie in it however i will say i will tell say that a company did bad a company did terrible mm-hmm. but i will also admit hey you know what they got this, this part is a right. good decision they fucked it up but they got it right this time. Ultimately, this bad good. people can make good this decisions. Good. If Hitler told you to do your taxes and follow, you know, <laughs> save your money and invest in a 401k and, you know, clean your house and don't be mean to people, it'd still be good advice, even though he's still an asshole. Yes. So I just heard Adam <laughs> defend Hitler. We're going to mark that down. Okay, episode 72. Adam <laughs> Hitler. I All didn't right. defend episode him. Episode 72, Adam Adam's last podcast. No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do any of that. You can't do that. That's for Twitter once we get popular enough for it to have Twitter feuds well, all oh it, god all it takes is a clip <laughs> anyone watching right now can clip that out and all of a sudden all adam's this yeah we won't go there anyway yeah. um, isn't that so, stupid uh, though how, yeah, how the media does that to people though isn't oh my annoying? god oh yeah it doesn't matter what they actually said yeah just bend what you heard <laughs> to make it say what yeah. you wanted to say absolutely yep so yeah uh it's our words battlefront 2 trying to fix some things i don't know if it'll result in better sales going forward I'm pretty sure the product is dead and buried already, but I don't know. It's so maybe maybe have it. Yeah, maybe Disney will give the rights to someone else who actually gives a shit. I want to see a From Software Star Wars game. Oh God, I'm just kidding. It's basically it's you are you are the random rebel people who die, and everyone else is Darth Vader's. That's the game. That's the whole Honest, game. Yeah. Honestly, one note company I want to see do Star C- Wars. C- it's C- fucking Bungie. Oh. Uh, you know what so good yeah that would be good yeah i think bungie would destroy especially if it's destiny destiny uh three star wars edition what if it was like afraid of what if it was halo 2 and halo 3 era bungie yeah that's what i'm saying (laughs) traditional shooter fuck yeah dude because they can do stories they know how to make big epic worlds they know how to incorporate vehicles properly they should they should have cd project red make a giant uh, story driven open world Star Wars game. Oh, that would be so fucking good. They've got to they've got to get their feet wet on Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven first. Which I by the way, I keep about that. I need to look into. That. I, I heard I heard a rumor that it will be released sometime in the next fifteen years. <laughs> so again, just a rumor, not guaranteed. But sometime in the next fifteen years, I bet we'll see this game coming. And out. only f- and only twenty people will die. And only half of the team will quit in the process. Yes. But eventually we waited that long on was fucking the last guardian. Yeah. So, uh, the last guardian went through what, like three console generations. Oh my God. (laughs) Hideous. And the game overall was okay, but the, because it waited so long, it did not make what people wanted. Yeah. That's true. So, uh, speaking of CD project red, uh, Geralt from the Witcher is coming to soul caliber six. So, That'll be cool. That's, he kind of fits in. Cool. He's yeah. got two swords. You guys yeah. play Soul Calibers? Yeah. I uh, played okay. one a long I, I time ago. Back. The last Soul Calibur I got heavy into was Soul Calibur 2 on the GameCube because it had Link, and that game was fucking badass. Yep. That was the last uh, one I played heavily. Which one did I play? It might have been two. Whichever one was on the PS2, I think, is the one I played. It probably had Heihachi as the, the pack-in character. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was Soul Calibur 4 when they did Darth Vader and Yoda, right? I think so. On the PS3. Either, and then they did Spawn or Predator. They did Predator. Which yeah, one did Spawn, Spawn was on Soul Calibur 2. They, yeah, so that's the one I the played. Xbox. And I was like, they oh, I wish I had history. that on Xbox. They have a history of bringing in characters. I think it's fun, mm-hmm. but it doesn't always work. It doesn't have yeah. to work. Speaking of things that probably won't ever work is uh, Ark Survival Evolved uh, coming to mobile as a free-to-play game. So, okay. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Right. Uh, Stardew Valley's new wizard simulator, Stardew Valley Creator's new wizard simulator is called Witchbrook. Okay. All right. We'll okay. see it when it comes out. Okay. Uh, and a <laughs> new study uh, that has compared uh, people playing 
at least 30 minutes a day of Grand Theft Auto uh, versus The Sims 3, they found that GTA causes no significant changes in behavior, which is cool, right? That's what we've known. That's what all the other studies are saying. Uh, it looks like another uh, great study. But what they didn't study uh, is violent gaming causing violent behavior in your significant others. Uh, so apparently a man was stabbed by his girlfriend for playing too much PUBG. And yeah, so that's a thing we have to study now. Uh, he's fine, by the way. Uh, he's also single. So ladies, sounds like a winner. Spends 12 hours a day playing PUBG. Wants to be an esports star. Uh, so get on it. Uh, can we say if you're trying to be an esports star, Battle Royale games should probably not be what you're focusing on. I, yeah, yeah, I don't. <laughs> uh, well, first, don't try to be. Two, don't go Battle Royale. Yeah, I, I don't. I it don't would be cool that. if it eventually worked. I don't see um, how it could. It's just it's dull to watch for, uh, you know, until you get 20 minutes in. It would take a production team of almost the same amount of people that are playing to make it good to watch, which would make it yeah. very expensive yes, it to would. actually make consumable. It would have to be and it's, a completely it's different... It's too RNG-based, right? Yeah. How many how many PUBG games have we dropped in? I'm like, well, I have a shovel, <laughs> a ball of twine, and three bullets, but no gun to put them in. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Like, if you're p playing in, you know, a, a $100,000 tournament and you get shit loot, like, that that fucking sucks. Right? An alternative would be... Your keyboard. Yeah. If you had fixed loot and a much faster play style or faster pace to the game. That's interesting. I think fixed loot could be something really cool because then there starts to be a lot of strategies. You know where mm -hmm. shit's at, mm -hmm. but you're still random on where the plane's dropping. Because so everyone's on a level playing field. Yeah. Maybe you, you also run into the issue where you've got, you know, six teams dropping in this one building because they know they're going to get an 8x scope. Or yeah. and that's the strategy. Is it worth teams. is it worth dropping with four other teams to try to get this really awesome gun to hopefully pay off in the end? Or yes, are you good enough, or do you need a four exit to the town over that no one else is going for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. I I don't. I still don't under. I gonna, still don't think it would fix the watching. It would fix the playing yeah, aspect. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of these esports, but it would still be a drag to watch for the majority. As, of as far as the watching would go on the fixed loot stuff they would watch those high traffic areas in the beginning of the matches and then, you know, go from there as, as it goes down. But if the, the pace of the game or if the games were much shorter or if the games tended to or, know, move or on let's, quicker, let's then it wouldn't be so bad. Don't, don't have, you know, a, a live audience. Just do it in private. Do a 12 Titans thing, right? It would be yes. fantastic yeah. to watch a PUBG tournament after the fact, with great editing, multiple camera angles, and, and everyone, you know, a, a multiple camera system. So you save the replay of the entire map from everyone's perspectives, and then you cut together a fantastically edited tournament right after that. That would be a fantastic thing to watch. Yes, and it yes. would take a lot of time on the, on the back end for that, because Indeed. you would have to yes. you know, go through the whole game from everybody's perspective, more or less, to find the highlights. Yeah. There would be a lot of weeding out footage and stuff, but that would be really cool to see. I would like to see it. That. would be amazing. I still say 12 Titans is the best way to watch Rocket League. Of yeah. all the things done, yeah. RLCS is great. It's live. 12 Titans is better. Well, well 12 so, Titans is um, good. Live Rocket League at the event. Fantastic. Okay. I, <laughs> I can definitely recommend that a lot. But So, speaking of live events and giant esports tournaments with a 26 million dollar prize pool um hey tom you want to go this year you know it's always in yeah, seattle let's go let's go yeah because it's it's literally right down the street it's the entire reason why i got a new job and moved to the west coast is so i could watch the international which is now going to be in canada so thanks valve thanks obama love you too um yeah um interesting move uh there could be yeah. other reasons to it that i don't want us to touch here but yeah, it's moving I, to Canada. I, I'm honestly, I'm super, I, I get it. I understand. We can't go into these reasons because we just end up in a giant shit show of a debate. Um, but I'm really yeah. disappointed. This hurts. 
Um, I think it's actually a good call, though. Um, it hurts because we live here. If you don't live here, it's a good idea for the biggest event in all of Dota to be in different spots. RLCS does it. Yeah, Dota should be doing that's it. That's true. That, I, yeah. That's a good point. I can't argue with that. The international should be in. It should be international. It shouldn't be in Seattle, right? It should be in Frankfurt. Uh, it should be in uh, Beijing. Beijing. It, sh- it should be in Beijing. It should be in fucking Toronto, right? <laughs> it should be in Dallas. It should be fucking in Tokyo. It should be everywhere because Dota is everywhere. Uh, it just hurts me because it was in my backyard and now it's not. Yeah. You waited too long. And now it's gone. Yep, I did. Uh, Microsoft is moment a new... moment's gone. Yes. Okay, it's sorry. Go ahead. Dust. Proceed. Just some dust. News. Uh, Microsoft <laughs> is forming a new cloud gaming division. Uh, cool. That's all we know. Okay. So that's, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Microsoft but... <laughs> needs to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, big news, though, uh, is we've got beta releases of Fortnite and PUBG on mobile phones. And here's the surprising thing. Everyone's saying that Fortnite on iOS is really fucking good and runs like a dream. I've actually heard that PUBG also plays better than what you would think. Yeah. That's yeah. It. That said, Fortnite, the fucked up thing is, we I think we hit on this last week, um, it's going to be cross-play. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you know, everyone always talks about PC shitting on consoles. Everyone's going to be shitting on the phone. Everybody. Well, I mean, you mean I can get kills in Fortnite play... now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm only going to be playing Fortnite on my phone while shitting. So yes. <laughs> Ew. Gross. But anyway, just, um, just say it. Wash your phone. So yeah, um, Fortnite, PUBG, Circle games are everywhere, and they're now on your fucking phones. Yes. So if you don't like them, you're just going to get used to them. Um, I'm starting to wear out on hearing about new ones coming up. It's kind of like MOBAs a few years ago. I'm oh hoping God. by the end of 2019, all these companies, God, I hate saying this, will die off or transition to something else oh, because we on. don't need 20 of these. We don't. It's, it's like it, all okay. the main stage shooters. Your main stage shooters, it's dwindled down to like three or four big guys, and that's it. All right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I'm going to break some hearts. Uh, if If you are... A, a person developing a circle game or a battleground style game or a company doing the same thing. Uh, here's here's a tip. You're too late, right? These these games have had a couple years of dev time. They they hit something perfectly right on the nose, right when it could get popular. And if you try to make a competitor today, you're just going to be a wash in every other remake and every other person trying to make the lightning strike twice. It's too fucking late. Go build something original. It's like Gigantic. Gigantic got closed down. We talked about that a while ago. For a MOBA, that game was really good. It just happened too late. Yeah, yeah it, it well, it's not really only happened good. too late. It, it wasn't even too late, right? Because it could come out. Gigantic could have released next year, and it wouldn't have had the insane amount of MOBA competition. It literally launched as a shark in a sea full of sharks and <laughs> that you, is true. you have to you have to launch at the perfect time and not when everyone in their mother is developing a game that competes directly with yours so right. if you've got a circle game dev it up maybe maybe tone down your development don't spend money on it maybe don't spend a bunch of time on it but keep it in your back pocket so you know when 2024 rolls around you can strike while the iron is less filled with other iron yeah, because, I mean, look, H1Z1 is fucking dying. H1Z1 was a huge game. If it's not making it anymore, well, I shouldn't say it that way. It's still living. But if it's not what it was, you're not going to make it, kid. Yeah. It's a rough world. <laughs> yeah. Rough, um, rough yeah. Man, so I'm totally going to download Fortnite on my phone because I guess it feels really good. Um, But there's an issue, Tom ios they're making an android client they already said that that's it'll, it'll get there it'll get there yeah eventually i'm gonna install an ios emulator on my android phone and play it through my android emulator on my linux computer on your running toaster. Line. so i <laughs> yeah. want to i want to i want to talk about this because i think i don't know if it was you or someone else talking about it if you emulate 
the Android on your computer. You get into a hopper with only Android players, but you're playing with mouse and keyboard. Holy shit. <laughs> I, it could work. I, there, yeah. there are emulator flags, but you could potentially make it spoof that. I mean, it, this has happened with Pokemon Go a lot. There are always going to be... There are always going to be ways to hack around this stuff. Um, ah. There were entire sites during Pokemon Go dedicated to what do you need, post GPS coordinates of where you are when you see it, and people will post a coordinate of here's a Dratini, and everyone that's on their computer spoofs their IP to those coordinates to catch it. it that's yeah. that's not how that works. Not spoof the IP. They spoof, spoof the GPS. Yes. Sorry, yes. that's what I meant. I did not mean IP. I understand that that's not how that works. Uh, but yeah, so you can really, really fuck with people that way. I, but, you know what I want? I, I really want uh, like a PUBG Go. I want to run. A, yes, PUBG Go. I want to run around with a virtual gun on my phone and kill other people with virtual guns on their phone in real life spaces. That would be fantastic and supremely dangerous. I want to vault <laughs> through a window of a department store. So there actually could be some really cool stuff with that. Because I mean, I'm a, think of laser tag. Laser tag, sort of that. Mm-hmm. It would there be just be a worldwide real, laser tag. <laughs> it could be really fucking cool. God damn it, Tom, you got my head thinking now. <laughs> right? You're terrible. <laughs> terrible individual. All okay, right, so um, I, I lied. If you're developing uh, PUBG Go or a circle game that's in augmented reality, keep doing that. I will buy it. <laughs> you will buy all of it. He will buy 20 of them so he can have 20 phones through his house so he can practice while he walks around. Yes. Just in case. Just to get ready. But with that, everyone... Um, it's going to be a short night for us tonight. Um, we're going to be chilling in Discord. We don't have an official postcast game. Uh, we're just going to be relaxing, probably doing some Jackbox, doing some Keep Talking. Postcast game club. is Discord and chill. And yep. we'll go from so, there. So everyone just jump in Discord, hang out with us. We'll be streaming some stuff while we do it. Um, it'll be a good time. Just relax with us. If you're going out, be careful, be safe. Have a good fucking time. Take an Uber. Do, yes. Yeah, do not drink or and drive. Lyft. Call, call Uber, call Lyft, call your mother. Don't drive while drunk. Don't be that fucking yes. asshole. Chug a bunch of water before you go to bed. Your future self will thank you. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Have an Alka-Seltzer <laughs> and Gatorade next to your bed for when you wake up. Yes. That's, my, oh, that's yeah. always my secret. And With a note a that says, drink this asshole. <laughs> but with that, everyone, um, let's do the rundown. Let's get out of here. So, yeah. If you are watching on Twitch right now, you can go over to 72 Pin Connector on YouTube and you can watch some of our older content. Um, We'll have some other videos up there. But yeah, just we have shit there. If you're watching us there on delay, you should totally come chill with us on Saturdays. Um, Next Saturday is the last weekly we are doing. After that, you can catch us every Saturday, first Saturday or every first Saturday of the month, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on our Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. I'm going to say that one more time. First Saturday of every month, you will find us here. Same time as weekly, but now only on the first Saturday of the month. Keep your ears ears peeled because we're going to be doing some weekly stuff still too. But just keep active. Listen to us. We'll tell you when it's coming out. Um, Also, let us know what you want to hear about. You can tweet at us at 72 PC podcast. Tell us all the Dark soul stuff you hate to hear. Tell us how great we look and how you love our voices. Tell us that we're awful. Whatever. Just tell us shit. And if you would like to listen to our podcast, yes, this is actually a podcast. Um, podcast. You can get the RSS. You can get our RSS feeds at 72pinconnector.com or Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, wherever the fuck you want to get them. Pocket Cast. So, Pocket Cast, yes. I love Pocket Cast. Such a good little app. With that, do you guys have anything else you'd like to throw out there? Pocket Cast. Okay. Podcast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Till next week, y'all. Game on. See you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>